Hey guys, it's Cece, and today I am here to talk about anticipated releases. This year I am splitting my most anticipated releases across three separate videos, so I hope you're ready for me to talk about a lot of books this month. And the other thing you should know is that these three videos will only be covering the first six months of 2019, so down in June you can expect a few more videos talking about the second half of the year. Today the books I'm going to be talking about are all adult releases, and there is a mix of books featuring queer main characters and books that don't feature queer main characters. Basically the theme is just adult releases, which I know I haven't talked about quite as much on my channel, but this year my anticipated releases shelf is absolutely out of control. I am only going to be talking about a very small portion of the books I'm anticipating. If you want to see my entire shelf of like 170 anticipated releases, I'm going to leave that linked down in the description below, as well as a mini Twitter thread that I did covering like maybe half of the releases that I'm anticipating. But with that out of the way, I'm going to talk about all of my anticipated adult releases and we are going to do this in order of release date. So let's get started. The first book that I want to talk about is In an Absent Dream by Seanan McGuire. This book has already been released. In fact, it was released on January 8th. I wanted to talk about this book because it was a highly anticipated release of mine, but I have already completed this book. This is the fourth book in the Wayward Children companion series. It follows a character named Lundy, who we met in the first book of the series. We know that Lundy at some point was part of a high logic world and this is her story. It is a goblin market inspired world and I do have to say that this is probably one of my all-time faves of the series. It's gorgeous so everyone's anticipating it for a reason. Next I want to talk about Once Ghosted Twice Shy by Elisa Cole. This was also already released on January 8th. This is part of the Reluctant Royal series although because it is adult romance you do not need to read the others in the series to understand the plot of this book. Basically this book is about two girls and one of them broke up with the other, broke her heart, and then they run into each other again in New York City at some point. It just seems like a really sweet romance book between two queer women of color and the incredible, incredible thing about this book is that the models on the cover are actually a real-life couple. I don't dip into romance as much as a genre, but as soon as I saw the cover of this book, I knew that I had to read it. Next, I want to talk about Last Night in Nuke by Niviak Corneliuson. This book is being released in English January 15th, but it has actually been translated from a previously published book. It was originally written in Danish, and the translator for this book is Anna Halliger. Basically, this book is set in Greenland, and it it follows the lush nightlife of a variety of young people, and it's also incredibly queer. It's told in monologues, emails, text exchanges, basically it's just painting a picture of young nightlife in this particular time, and about this particular group of people, pretty much all of whom are queer. I have been really, really excited about this one. In fact, I already pre-ordered it, and I cannot wait to read it. Next up, I want to talk about The Dreamers by Karen Thompson Walker, and this is being released January 15th as well. This is a sci-fi mystery story that is set in a small college town and it's basically about an illness where the symptom is that you fall asleep and don't wake up. You don't die, you just constantly sleep. So it's about a variety of people in this small town trying to figure out this illness, trying to figure out how to save people. It sounds like a really, really fascinating concept, and it has a gorgeous cover. Okay, moving into February, I want to talk about Black Leopard Red Wolf by Marlon James. This book is being released on February 5th and is a chunky fantasy book. There's a whole lot going on in this description. It is sort of being passed around as the African Game of Thrones. In fact, a lot of the books I'll be talking about in my anticipated releases videos feature some kind of comparison to Game of Thrones. So it seems like high fantasy is really having a moment in 2019. Sort of the baseline of this book is that it is about a tracker who has been sent to track down a particular boy. That's kind of all I know about the description, but this is getting all the early hype and I cannot wait to sink my teeth into it, even though it is absolutely massive and is going to take me ages to get through. Next I want to talk about The City in the Middle of the Night by Charlie Jane Anders and this is being released on February 12th. So this is a sci-fi book that has a vague description near the end but basically it starts in a world where there are two definitive climates, this harsh unending day and a dark frigid night. But it also seems to be set in a world where the government controls the environment and you can already tell that that is probably not a great thing so 
bad stuff's gonna happen. I have really wanted to read a book by Charlie Jane Anders, and the concept of this book, the cover, everything about it just makes me extremely interested. Moving on, I want to talk about Cherokee America by Margaret Verbal, which is coming out February 19th. So this is historical fiction set in, like, the American West in 1875, I believe is when it begins. And the center of this novel is a Cherokee American singer who goes by the name Czech. A bunch of stuff has gone missing, and Czech, who is a mother of five, a widow, a wealthy farmer, she's super unimpressed with all this missing stuff, and so she sets out to solve the mystery. I'm especially interested in this story considering that it is about the American frontier in this particular time period, but is from the point of view of an indigenous person. <laughs> that is a voice that is constantly erased from this narrative, or they are cast as the villains in the story. So I'm really excited to read, like, a sweeping historical adventure novel from this point of view. Plus the cover is just beautiful. Moving on, I want to talk about The Haunting of Tramcar 015 by P. DeJelly Clark. I have talked about this book in a couple of videos already, but basically it is set in an alternate 1912 Cairo, and these two agents from the Ministry of Alchemy, Enchantments, and Supernatural Entities are sent to handle the very routine haunting of a tram car that winds up not being that routine. I am so incredibly interested in what this story is going to look like. Okay, another epic high fantasy book I want to talk about is The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. This book is being released on February 26th, and honestly, what drew me to the story was that I heard that it is incredibly queer. I don't have specific labels for specific characters, but a couple of the people who have early review copies have talked about the fact that queerness is very much at the center of the story for many different characters, so that's what drew me to it. Honestly, I can't even follow the summary that's available for this book on Goodreads, except for the fact that there appear to be four different points of view, that it's an epic fantasy, and that it is a standalone, which is probably why it is super chunky. I think it's like 800 to 900 pages, but I've been trying to get into high fantasy more and more. This is getting all the hype. I know there are dragons. That's my go-to, and I know it's super queer, so of course, of course, this is on my anticipated releases. Now moving on to some sci-fi, I want to talk about Ancestral Night by Elizabeth Bear. This is the first book in a series, and it is being released on March 5th, and get used to hearing that date, there are so many books being released on March 5th. This is being described as a space opera. It's about a woman who goes on a routine salvage mission and finds something that she shouldn't. She runs afoul of space pirates. She has to fight against the greater corruption that is maybe hiding the things that she's found from public knowledge. Basically, it sounds fantastic and anything that has space opera as a genre description, I will read it. Now moving on to some nonfiction, a real change of pace, I want to talk about Real Queer America, LGBT Stories from Red States by Samantha Allen. This book is being released on March 5th, and you better believe I already pre-ordered it. This book is deeply up my alley for many reasons. Basically, Samantha Allen is a trans woman who grew up as part of the Mormon church here in Utah. She later came out, left the church, married another woman, and now has collected these stories, which are LGBT stories from Red States. I think it's going to to be fascinating. I think it's going to be just an excellent and necessary look at queer lives from more conservative states. Plus, Samantha Allen's Mormon background particularly draws me to this collection. I think it's going to be absolutely fantastic. Now moving on to A Woman is No Man by Ataf Rum, which is also being released on March 5th. So this book is covering a lot. It's specifically covering three generations of Palestinian women living in America. The only other thing I know about this book is that it's set in Brooklyn and the fact that it is already getting some really excellent early reviews. I think this book has an excellent concept and is going to be digging into some really essential topics that I don't know that much about, which is why I am anticipating it so highly. Next up, a book that I think many people are talking about this year, and that is Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This is also being released on March 5th. This is another book that I pre-ordered. I'm very, very hype about it, mostly because I loved Taylor Jenkins Reid book. Uh, the Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo that I read last year, so of course I'm anticipating this one. This is a historical fiction story. It is set in the 60s and the 70s, and it follows Daisy, who's coming of age in the 60s, and a band called The Six, who are gradually getting attention. It is about them coming together, them falling apart. It sounds a lot like Fleetwood Mac, which is really interesting to me, because I love Fleetwood Mac. Honestly, after reading The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, I would read just about anything that Taylor Jenkins read 
writes next, but I'm really, really excited because the concept of this book is so very much something that I would want to read anyway. It just feels like a lot of good things coming together at once. Now I would like to talk about Gingerbread by Helen Oyeyemi, and this is also being released on March 5th, but I promise it's the last one I'm talking about that's being released on the 5th. I tried not to look too deeply into this book because I very much feel like it's one I want to be surprised by when I go into it, but the concept of it is that this book is engaging with the sort of mysterious place that gingerbread holds in children's stories. So it is about fairy tales, there are probably some retelling elements, but it's all following the theme of gingerbread. It sounds incredibly fascinating, it is also being marked as fabulism, which is drawing me to the story more. Yeah, I think it's going to be eerie and odd and I love any story that's engaging with fairy tales, so very, very interested in this one. Next up, I want to talk about The Bird King by G. Willow Wilson and this is being released on March 12th. Apparently this is a fantasy book set at the height of the Spanish Inquisition. Already enough info for me to be interested, besides the fact that it has a gorgeous cover. But basically, this is the story of a woman named Fatima, who is a palace concubine, and she has a best friend in Hassan, who is the uh, royal map maker. And Hassan has a secret. He can draw maps of places he's never been, and has the power to shape reality. All of this sounds just incredibly fascinating to me. I think it's a fantastic concept, and I can't wait to see how the story develops once I actually get to read this one. Now moving on to Miranda in Milan by Catherine Duckett, which is being released on March 26th. This is a queer novella that is reimagining the consequences of Shakespeare's The Tempest, which, okay. I'm very into that. I'm very, very interested in stories that play with Shakespeare, especially stories that queer Shakespeare as as it was meant to be. So the fact that this is a story set after The Tempest, reimagining what is going to occur because of The Tempest, and it features a female-female romance, this Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Next, I want to talk about The Luminous Dead by Caitlin Starling, which is being released on April 2nd. This is horror sci-fi about angry queer girls. So that's amazing. This seems to be about a girl named Geyer who finally gets the chance to lead her own expedition. She really thinks that this is going to change her life and she winds up being sent on the expedition with another girl named M. M is like this horrifying partner on this journey that doesn't have a problem with controlling Geyer's body, with drugs and manipulating her. But ultimately, this is an expedition into a deep dark hole that has some creepy shit inside, and it's about queer girls, as mentioned. I just felt like I needed to reiterate that, so you understand. I think this is going to be Amazing. Next I want to talk about When We Left Cuba by Chanel Clayton, which is being released on April 9th. I want to read this book because I recently finished Next Year in Havana by Chanel Clayton, and this book is set in the same world following the same family, although this one is centered on a different character. Next Year in Havana is a romance book that's very much centered on the Cuban Revolution, Cuban families leaving Cuba at the height of the Cuban Revolution, and this book is about a character named Beatriz, who is the most mysteriously fascinating character in Next Year in Havana. I am so interested to know more about her life, and I cannot wait to read this. I also have pre-ordered this. That, that's the end of books I've pre-ordered. I'm just letting you guys know that those are like at the, at the top of the hype list, because I pre-ordered them, so. Moving on, I want to talk about The Murmur of Bees by Sofia Segovia. This is being released in English on April 16th and was translated by Simon Bruni. This is historical fiction set in a small Mexican town, and it is about a group of people who discover a baby nestled in a blanket of bees. That was all I ever learned about it because that is an interesting enough concept that it got me right away. I'm fascinated to see where the story goes from there. I think it's got an absolutely great hook, a gorgeous title. I'm ridiculously excited. Next, I want to talk about The Binding by Bridget Collins, which is being released on April 16th. This book is basically historical fantasy. This has, like, the most fascinating world. So, in this world, reading is forbidden because books carry a very different meaning in this world than they do in ours. In this historical fantasy, you can remove 
emotions, you can remove memories, and in order to do this, they need to be bound into the pages of a book. So this is about a character who has always been drawn to books, despite the fact that they're forbidden, and then he eventually gets the chance to be an apprentice to a bookbinder, and he gets to learn how to bind memories into the pages of books. It sounds super fascinating. I think it has elements of The Giver, which I'm really interested in. It sounds a bit like Inkheart. I know I'm talking about uh, middle grade and young adult right now, but these are the books that I read in my youth that remind me a lot of this concept, which is why I think I'm so drawn to it. Next, I want to talk about Walking on the Ceiling by A. Siegel Savas, which is being released on April 29th. This book is set in Paris and also says it's set in a changing Istanbul. So it's about a young Turkish woman who moves to Paris after her mother's death. And then one day outside of a bookshop, she meets an older British author whose books about Istanbul she's always admired and they kind of strike up an odd friend. So I think this is going to be about changing landscapes, about unconventional relationships. It has a lot of great concepts, a lot of concepts that I'm drawn to in stories, and so I'm really, really excited about it. How many times have I said excited in this uh, video? It's too high, I'm guessing. Okay, moving on, I want to talk about Middle Game by Seanan McGuire, which is being released on May 7th. Yes, I'm talking about a second Seanan McGuire book in one video. I love... I love Shauna McGuire's writing. So far, the only thing I have read by her is the Wayward Children series, but I have a lot of her books under the name Mira Grant on my TBR, and I also desperately want to read this. This is a standalone fantasy that the summary says is about alchemy and shadowy organizations. It's also about a mysterious pair of twins. At this point, Shauna McGuire could write anything and I would be invested in it. I think that she has particularly a way with words when it comes to the mysterious and the fantastical. So with a concept like this and an author like I know Shauna McGuire is, I'm already intrigued beyond words by what this book could possibly be. Okay, moving on, I want to talk about Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuinston, which is being released on May 14th. A lot of people are shelving this book as YA, but I have heard it from multiple sources that this is definitely new adult. So it is being put in this video as opposed to my queer YA video that's coming soon. So this is a male-male romance. It follows Alex, who is a first son. His mother is the president of the United States. He has a lot of duties as far as being like an international socialite, which only becomes harder when his longtime nemesis, Prince Harry, there are photos of him leaked that are going to threaten the relationship between Britain and America. America. So Alex has to kind of patch up the situation. So it's two boys who hate each other, but I know they're gonna love each other. And I'm very excited about this, especially because it has gotten so many really excellent reviews. Um, I... I beg it bended knee for an arc of this book, truly. Last two I want to talk about. First up is The Deep by Rivers Solomon, and this is being released on June 4th. This book doesn't have much of a description yet, it doesn't have a cover yet, but the one sentence summary is enough to totally sell me. Basically, this is about an underwater society inhabited by the descendants of African slave women. What? I want to know a billion times more. I want to read more books by River Solomon. Their book, An Unkindness of Ghosts, has been on a couple of my, like, must-read TBRs. So I'm very, very interested to know more about this. And in particular, I'm dying to see a cover because I think the cover for this could be gorgeous. And the final book that I want to talk about is The Lesson by Cadwell Turnbull, which is being released on June 11th. This is a sci-fi story, and it is set in the Virgin Islands. Basically, it's about this community and there are a collection of alien ships that came down a few years ago and the alien society and the people who live in the Virgin Islands have had an okay relationship but more and more it's seeming like that relationship might crumble apart and after years of living in semi-harmony that's not great. I have never read a book set in the Virgin Islands before, and I really like this concept that is not dealing specifically with an alien landing, but dealing with the long-term ramifications of that. Really digging into the relationship between a community that has become accustomed to alien life. So I'm really, really interested 
in the concepts behind this book, and I think that it has the potential to be fantastic. Okay, that is it. Those are all of the books that I want to talk about as far as my most anticipated adult releases. Like I said, please check out my anticipated releases shelf on Goodreads. There are so many more titles on there of books that I didn't get to talk about. What are some of your most anticipated adult releases? Let me know down in the comments below. I would love to add somehow more to my TBR. Thank you so much for watching though. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in another video very soon. Bye!